What is up, World Mobile Nation? Welcome to That Central. I'm your host here, Fareed. Today, we're diving into everything going on with World Mobile. So I do apologize for getting started a little bit late here. We aren't working on our normal schedule, so I do apologize for that. But nonetheless, thank you for taking your time out of your busy weekends to join us to talk about everything going on with Cardano, World Mobile, and just the deep end sector. Without any further ado, I will be joined by two guests today here. First and foremost, we've got Rob from Trek Pool. Rob, welcome aboard. How are you? Hey, doing great, my friend. How are you doing? I am good. I am good. Um, interesting way to sort of kick off the weekend show here. Uh, this is not the way that I expected for it to kick off. I was just speaking with you and Manny backstage, uh, but I am thankful to have you here with me. So um, how's your Sunday treat you, man? Good. I, I did a little bit of scanning for points on the tractor today. I had to move some hay around and then I had to drive up and, and drop the hay off at a different location. And, and so scanning and doing stuff. I've had a couple of good conversations already today about World Mobile, some some great people. And then I, I jump in here and I'm looking at these, I'm I'm just I'm cracking up looking at all these comments here. You know, the reason we're starting late is you had to give me a tranquilizer to calm me down. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's th- these these are brilliant. So yeah, yeah so. things are going great. It's a good day. I'm I'm happy um again to be joined right by such an enthusiastic but such a um what is the word that i'm looking for here dedicated community member when it comes to world mobile right um i can definitely hear the passion in your voice even right now and i tend to forget how many hands or how many different sort of things you have your hands tied in right so obviously you do your law enforcement work you do your farming work you know you do world mobile stuff here so it's just like man rob is always doing something so anywho Let's go ahead and get our last guest here. Um, unfortunately, it is not Clover. Clover's on a break, but we have Emmanuel or Manny from the World Mobile team. Manny, welcome aboard. How are you? Hey, hey. how's it going, guys? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Excited to have you on here. Looks like you've got an upgraded background, man. Looking nice. Yeah, I just cycle through these these Aerostat backgrounds every week. They're so <laughs> so fun. I need to get one framed in front of me. That's the the next thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, I like that one. I, I assume that's from uh, Mozambique. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. So you've just gotten back from Paris, right? With uh, blockchain um, week taken there. Pretty big conference. A lot of the Cardano community also showing up in attendance there. And so I want to talk you know, talk to you, of course, a little bit about how that was. Um, Rob has also taken a trip, right? This was about a week and a half ago, um, into an undisclosed location, right? This was, I think, peak FOMO time for just everybody within the World Mobile community. Um, Clover met what up, met up, excuse me, with the team in Reno, right, to kind of talk, introduce himself to his air node host right which was i think was pretty huge as well so quite a bit to jump into there was also a recent eno call that took place about two days ago where there was a little bit of alpha that was shared i think some of that could potentially be shared here some of that i think will be coming out in the next community call so we're going to dive into all of that if you guys do enjoy content like this breaking down everything going on in cardano all i ask that you guys smash that thumbs up helps to really spread the content out there and get the word out um, so while we're kind of just warming things up, uh, maybe we we start off with Rob and his recent trip. Uh, maybe Rob, you can you know kind of just reiterate, give us some of the highlights, and then Manny will come over to talk a little bit more about Paris Blockchain Week, and then we're going to dive into some of the nitty gritty details there. So Rob, how was your trip last week, and is there anything you can actually share with us? Yeah, it was a, it was a great time. I I was all geared up, and ready to go to uh, Reno. I had my tickets and everything. And then one of the co-founders is a, is a personal friend of mine. And he, he reached out to me. Um, I was supposed to leave Monday morning. He reached out to me Thursday, at almost midnight and said, Hey, uh, any chance you can, you can, uh, not go to Reno. We, we want to take you down here. We got some things going on that, uh, we think you'd be interested in. Um, and it was, it was an aerostat launch. They were w- doing some testing, uh, some final testing, adding some implementation to the Aerostat, and then showing it off for a major potential partner. Um, uh, that a client that was down there that um, was was in attendance and ready to ready to see this thing work, and it was amazing. Um, I mean, 
the coolest thing we got in like eight o'clock at night on Monday night. Um, I took a, ended up taking a picture about, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night with me in front of the aerostat. And I didn't want to post it because it was April fool's day. And I didn't want to, I, 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 I'm not good with jokes. I don't like giving jokes because I don't like receiving jokes. And, and so I waited until the next morning, but I took that picture of me with the aerostat behind me. And, uh, it, it really, really cool. It, you know, you get in there, it's, it's dark out by the time you're rolling up and you, you're rolling up and this, this thing's on the ground and it's all lit up as spotlights on and everything. And it was, it was unreal rolling, rolling in a vehicle approaching the, 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 the launch point. Um, and I got to watch the James tag and the guys, uh, work on, on the equipment, um, making sure everything was, was, was tested. Right. And then, uh, you know, the next morning, um, we were in a hurry cause there's weather coming in. So it was now we're morning of April 2nd and there, we wanted to get it in the air if we could before the weather, cause it's really dangerous to try and launch it in the middle of the weather. You can, it can stay up there, but you don't want to launch it or pull it down ideally when the hectic weather. And, uh, I was the tallest guy there and they said, Hey Rob, jump on the lift. So they raised me on one of those, those mechanical lifts that go up in the air. Right. And, um, me and James Tagger on this lift with this lift operator and all right, Rob, hold it up. And I'm holding this, this, the, the payload, it's like a million dollar payload, right? I'm holding this thing in the air and, and I'm, I, Hey, there's a little latches. I'm like thinking, Oh crap, I'm going to drop this thing. Um, but I end up getting the, getting the, the, the things up there, getting them latched in place. And then, you know, because I had the reach, James was holding it. I reached over and I, I, I popped all these pins into place and, and I'm watching this million dollar payload being held by these four little pins. I'm thinking, Holy moly. But I mean, it's, it's solid construction, but uh, really, really cool. Just to, just to, I mean, push something in. It was almost like connecting Legos in a sense, you know, real, real simple, but it was, um, it was a lot of fun. And you know, just seeing, seeing these guys work, seeing how they control things from the computers that turn the direction of the, of the, the, the directional payload, you know, it, it, they, some of them are 360. Some of them are directional depending on what they're testing and just watching, watching them work, watching these, these brilliant minds, um, do all of this and then getting up in the air, you see a manual, my, 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 my good friend there, um, you know, we're, we're up there looking at this thing. It's up, up thousands of feet in the air and and we have these these spotter scopes we're just looking at this stuff it was it was an amazing time um i gotta like spend a lot of time with my friend emmanuel um hang around james tag he's probably the smartest person i've ever been around and it it, it was it was a great time i will i will drop a little alpha um about it uh, i don't even have clearance to say this so i'm probably gonna get in trouble for this but uh manny manny's thinking oh crap what's he gonna say um, there was some speculation, some things went viral when I was down there and I'm just gonna clear up one little misconception. I was not at SpaceX. So I don't know if that helps with rumors or whatnot. Um, but I was, I, I had nothing to do with SpaceX. I was not at the SpaceX launch point. Um, otherwise, otherwise I can't say any more, but I just wanted to clear that up because I, 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 I thought that, uh, some, some people, um, I got so many DMs. Uh, hey, t- tell me about Elon. What, what's he look like? I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, it was it was an amazing time. I was down there. Um, we we got to test some things out. You know, I I, I said on the Earth Node Alliance space last week. You know, Mickey made a post that said sixty miles. We were testing range with the prospective clients, and we hit sixty miles, and we could have gone further. You know, we got this, this thing up in the air, we pointed in the right direction and we just went and, uh, it, it, it could have gone, it could have gone further. It says we ran out of time. Um, we already had to reschedule our flights. It was supposed to leave on Wednesday afternoon. And now we're doing this testing on Thursday because of the weather. And, uh, so we, it's like, I'd love to go another 10 miles, try and figure this out. I think we're really close. And. Like if we don't get back right now and I got to the airport with less than 30 minutes to spare before my flight took off. So, um, just, it was, it was an amazing time, uh, amazing people. And just the scope, the scope of what we saw with world mobile and what, what they're doing. It's just, this is more than a blockchain. This is more than a, uh, a, a router that you put on top of your, your, your roof. I mean, this is some serious stuff with some serious clientele with, with, with some serious, um, serious parameters. I mean, this is, this is, this is big time. And, and 
it was I was so honored to be a part of that just as as an observer as somebody who just kind of stood around and waited waited to help out it was it was a great time the enthusiasm the joy the smile on your face uh, I think everybody feels it as you're speaking about your experience with world mobile uh, what's brand new news to me right or what was brand new news to me was the fact that this entire site had gone unnoticed now granted yes Mickey had teased it a while back but it kind of fell off the radar until some speculation had popped up with some tweets online and even myself, you know, I kind of fell into it um, and I was kind of mesmerized by some of the rumors swirling around with SpaceX, et cetera. And so I do appreciate you obviously setting the record straight, um, but well, it was mind blowing. Go ahead, go ahead. And I'll just say this because I am, look, I'm not an employee of World Mobile. I'm not affiliated in any way with World Mobile. I just, I'm passionate about it. I don't know anything about SpaceX. Um, I don't know anything. I just, there was almost an accusation that I was there. I, several, several people in the community kind of were trying to piece things together. We're, we're, we're in the world mobile as Rob. Um, but so I don't know. I, again, I'm not, I'm not denying or refuting any rumors about space. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, they don't tell me those deep, dark secrets. I'll just say that I was not at a SpaceX location. So I'm, and, and I appreciate the honesty, right? Um, and that was actually going to be my, my follow-up question before we talk about Paris Blockchain Week to Manny. How many of these undisclosed locations, you know, could there be? Um, is there anything, Manny, that you can share with us with respect to, you know, how big the World Mobile operations are? Because, again, I know you guys aren't showing your whole hand, right? What Rob has just mentioned, I think, is just one piece of the pie here. Um, so over to you, Manny. Again, I'm, I'm excited. But before we jump into Paris and your experience there, what can you maybe let us know about Rob's experience, how quickly the community can kind of hear news about that from official sources coming directly from the team? Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's great to, to have a community, community member like Rob who's able to, to be there, be the representative of the community on the ground at these undisclosed locations. It's it's good because it gives us a bit, a bit more of a, a you know, credibility um, but in terms of in terms of other locations, what I would encourage everyone to do is to to look at the, the deployment diary. So we 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 always list who we're talking to, and it is a month uh, redacted. So those locations on there, you can consider whatever you're reading has happened a month ago, and much more much more advanced things are taking place um, uh, currently within those locations. So some, some locations mentioned are Kenya, Nigeria, et cetera. Um, that's all I would say for now. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, I will go ahead and leave the links to the Dev Diaries down below. Um, so please make sure to go ahead and check those out. Um, but yeah, I've definitely tried to keep up with them. There is quite a bit of information actually in these. And that was some of the references that I saw in some of the Twitter posts were referencing back over to the Dev Diaries. Um, before we dive into any of the additional updates that have come out, Manny, you were just in Paris. I saw you hanging out at the Louvre. I also saw some of your posts translated in French. Do you speak French? Um, because I have some French in my background, but I didn't know that you actually yeah. did too. At least it appears that way. Um, so can you maybe kind of break break for us down, um, you know, what your experience was like first off, and then we're going to dive into Scan for Points and some of those updates there as well. OK, pour les Français qui regardent maintenant, je parle français parce que ma famille vient de la Guyane. Donc, oui, je parle français. Um, yes, I speak French. Um, but yeah, no, I, 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 love, I love France. So I spend a summer in Provence every, every single year. Last year was the only time I didn't, I didn't do that. And going back for Paris Blockchain Week for World Mobile, combined with seeing all my friends and walking through supermarkets was just <laughs> fantastic. So. Yeah, that's why I'm so pumped at the moment. But in terms of Paris Blockchain Week, so Paris has historically been one of the centers of, of Web3 crypto in, in Western Europe. So London is, is catching up, but Lon the London scene is very, is very small, I would say. Paris tends to attract all the international um, developers, uh, the hard developers, think Vitalik Buterin and all of those speaking at, at meetups. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted wanted to go. I wanted to connect with more with more people and, and set the seeds for for World Mobile going 
going and exposing ourselves more to the European community um, this year. So I'll be at um, FCC in, in Belgium um, in a couple of months' time as a result of that. Um, but yeah, in terms of in terms of what I got up to there, so I was there. We are <laughs> as Ryan and I. The event was at the Louvre. So for some for some people at the event, they got a nice tour of the of the Louvre and all of all of that. So it was pretty pretty good. Um, I was there with Ryan. Ryan was was more doing the official side. So on the the Paris Blockchain Week, seeing all the panels, he managed to speak to some some really good people. You know, Tim Draper was there. Um, uh, Richard Tang was there. All of all of these these amazing people. Um, I was I was hitting up all of the side events <laughs> and some some amazing roundtables at which Deepin was the primary topic, especially in front of uh, an investor roundtable that I went to, whereby we were we were speaking about how Web three needs to solve the revenue problem, and investors the investors there were so excited about um, Deepin. Some came up to me having known about World Mobile previously and were asking me questions about how we can get how they can get involved in World Mobile. So it was inspiring to hear. But the biggest part for me, the biggest sort of success was actually I spoke to a lot of people in in uh, at all of these events um, that had heard about crypto but have no idea how it works, what it's useful for, all of that sort of stuff. And the ability of me to go and show World Mobile's broadband website and say, have a look at and compare internet speeds, they got it immediately. So it, it, for me, it was, it was sort of a test of how to, to communicate World Mobile in a way that is resonant with whatever the stakeholder is, whether it be an investor, whether it be a, a Web3 guy, whether it's somebody just interested in Web3 and wants a bit of, maybe wants to learn more. Um, yeah, it was it was brilliant, and I look forward to to going again. <laughs> awesome to hear, um, especially <clears throat> amongst such a huge crowd, a lot of people showing up to that particular event. Again, I saw a lot of people from the Cardano community, you know, taking the time out. Obviously, if they live in that area, it's a little easier for for them to get there. Um, doing so, I have you know, I'm in the U.S., so it's a little, it's a lot harder for me. Um, I would assume it's also the same, you know, for for somebody like Rob. Uh, but I would love to be able to you know enjoy the experience enjoy the city while also being able to talk about some of our most of your projects with World Mobile being one of those now looking you know just later into the year Manny um what other events are you and the team planning on representing World Mobile at could you maybe share with us a little bit surrounding that for sure yeah so Ryan's currently at F Amsterdam I believe F Dam so he's been there for the past couple of days I think he might be leaving soon but he's going straight to Token 2049 so he's gone Paris <laughs> Dam and Dubai with barely any sleep I <laughs> but he loves it he loves it he's doing he's doing a, a fantastic job picking out people and speaking to people um and then so 20 to Token 2049 will be the next one um in in Dubai that some of the team members will be attending um, personally, I will be at um, uh, FCC in Brussels in in July this year, and then there are discussions about going going to Rare Evo and more. So we, you know, Rob's <laughs> Rob's happy there. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's currently currently what we it looks like. There is a more formal calendar. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but I'll hopefully be able to share some of those um, in advance with with the community. There's been a lot of interest, particularly in a European, um, a European meetup. So that's something that might be might be on the tables. And then obviously, all of us always. I'm always in London at, at crypto events. I'll probably now always be in Paris at crypto events. So I'll just let the community know where I'm I'm going as I decide. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I want to quickly just jump into the chat here. A lot, a lot of questions coming in, and we'll just go ahead and maybe just grab a couple of these. Oh, we've got some appreciation for your French accent. So let me see if I can actually find that comment here again. We've got une bouteille de vin, s'il vous plaît, coming in from Mike. Um, we've got Ada Lovelace, really appreciating that accent there, Emmanuel. Um, a lot of other people tuning in. So let me just quickly give some shout outs here. We've got Batman in the house, Reptilian in the house, Ada Lovelace blistering. Um, we've got Nova Earth Path. We've got Wave Notes in the house. 
We've got Will OG. Um, really, everybody, thank you all for taking the time to join us here. SF Zip, Hydrex, just to name a few. Um, let's go ahead and maybe just touch on a couple of quick questions, and then I want to jump into Scan for Points, some upgrades, some updates, excuse me, that have been made there. And then we can also talk a little bit about the ENO call that was recently had. There was a ton of information shared there, and I know that some of it is still under wraps, but I think that there are a couple of key points that we could potentially discuss here for today's live stream. So um, quick question coming in here from Evolutions NFT. Where can I find the deployment diary? I did just go ahead and share this. I'll go ahead and just share the link in the chat right now. So Evolutions, go ahead and check out the chat. Uh, but what you can do is you can head over to worldmobile.io. And then there is a blog subheader right here. You can click on that and you can actually get access to all of the previously um, deployed diaries, all the previously deployed updates. And the last one I think just came out about a week and a half ago. So um, this is the one right here from March 21st. So maybe about two weeks ago. So not too far, but that's how you can quickly go ahead and get access to those deployment diaries. Another follow-up question coming in here from Eric surrounding the timeline for scan for points for iOS. This is actually a question that I had posed to you as well, Manny, right? Um, is there any updates for some of us um, Apple holders, right? So anybody with an iPhone right now, I don't believe that we've got access to the global app. You know, what, what are things looking like from a development perspective? So unfortunately, Apple are really tough when it comes to, to some of the restrictions they can do on the back end for what we need to do. However, there have been some updates and also there have been some updates to, to making that easier for developers. And our smart tech team has found a solution. So they're, they're looking at it right now. There's no timeline, but it, this is something that obviously we want to do because the majority of the, the target countries we're going to be in, uh, especially the US, um, mostly are Apple. So it is on the table. Thank you. We do have record breaking numbers tuning in right now. So again, everybody, we appreciate you all tuning in, um, listening to us chat about World Mobile, something that I think we're all very passionate about. And of course, make sure to go ahead and follow Manny, the Web3 cat. His X account is linked down below as a part of today's video description. Rob's is also down there as well. We typically have Clover with us, but he's actually on vacation right now. So Clover, if you're tuning in, we wish you all the best and hope to see you in the next couple of weeks. Now, speaking of Clover, uh, he posted some recent screenshots. Let me go ahead and actually share those with the community here. He has not stopped scanning since he's left the United States. So we've got a picture of him scanning for points. We've also got Farmer Rob on his tractor here, also scanning for points. Um, Rob, what's your experience been like, you know, um, just scanning for points? I saw a post that you made not too long ago about how you used to scan for points on your drives. But you realize that, you know, you, you probably weren't spending enough time um, providing data in those particular hexes or in those particular areas to where now you're trying to take a much slower approach. So um, before I dive into Manny, you know, what's been your experience like scanning for points in your particular area? You know, so I, I would just I, I, I bought a, uh, a little Google Pixel 5, you know, I, it was like 160 bucks on Amazon. It was used, I think maybe I think it was a refurbished phone. Um, just something that I could, I could do cause I have an iPhone. And so I got it. And what's great about this is you don't need to have a SIM card. You don't need to have connectivity to your phone. Um, you can go out and scan and you can come back to your house or wherever you have Wi-Fi, And then once, once you're connected, it'll send all of the data that you've been scanning with. So you don't need to have a live connection to your phone even, um, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not the most technical guy in the world. So literally this weekend I was able to, for the first time ever use a hotspot on my iPhone. So now I can walk around the park or wherever I want to go, use my iPhone as a hotspot. And that way I'm immediately, immediately connecting. If you look at the picture that you posted of Cal's, it shows the streets, but it's all grayed out. And then if you look at the picture that you posted of me, you'll see the green hexes and you'll see the orange ones with a check mark on them. And that's the difference between being connected to the internet actively and not. If you're, if you're like that, there you go. That that's going to show you that's a live, live, live view. Now, if you're walking, you're not, you're not going to walk out of this picture. You, it, it, the map will move with you. But so if you, let's say you walk out your front door and you don't have connection to your phone, it'll, it'll view this as far as the map has pre-saved, but it's going to show you where you're at. That little blue dot is going to show you where you're at. 
Um, but if you don't have connection, if you, let's say you're driving, you're driving down the road or something like that, or you just turn your phone on, and you don't have any connection. It's just going to gray out the map and it, it'll still show you location services, but it's not going to show you where all those, those little hexes are. And so what was cool was when I turned on the, um, I turned on the hotspot on my phone since I don't have a connection there. Otherwise I was able to drive and I was driving 25 miles an hour and looking. Um, I mean, my eyes were on the road, but I, I could also somehow, you know, safely tell what was going on on my phone, but I could see that, that I was clearing a hex um, going directly across the, the diagonal or the diameter of it in about seven seconds. Okay. So imagine doing 70 miles an hour. You're probably going maybe 1.5 seconds through a hex. Um, that's not going to be a lot of time to scan. So when I looked at the map, I would notice that I was, I might be 40 or 50 hexes between scans and places I've driven a hundred times. Um, it just, it, it, because it doesn't register. It's not like, you know, the faster you go, the more you're going to do. There's a limited amount. And so the longer you saturate an area, the better the chance you are of, of doing that. Many, many mentioned in the discord, I believe it was, um, there's about 15 scans in that set time. Well, the set time is 15 minutes. So you anticipate on average one minute per location is probably a fair assumption. Doesn't mean you're going to get it necessarily. Um, but it's probably a fair assumption for planning purposes. So if you're walking, like I went walking around my office last night, you know, to walk down the street to get some food. And I, I just, I slow walked and I watched myself going from grid to grid or from hex to hex just to see, you know, how, how much time am I walking through this? 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Maybe I slow it down. Maybe I stop at the street corner instead of trying to run across before the light changes. You know, you, you start to, to think through those things. And then you think about, um, you know, what's my route going to be? How am I going to plan? If I'm going to drive, sh should I take the route that has more stoplights? Because the reality is you'll probably get more more scans there if you were slowing and stopping and waiting as opposed to just driving through, even if it's a low speed area. So you, you get to strategize a little bit. And that, that's what's so great about what this update is, because we didn't know what those hexes looked like. In my mind, I'm thinking CBRS hexes. If you go to, to aeronode.worldmobile.io and you look at the CBRS map, it shows you how big those hexes are. You're talking city blocks, right? Multiple city blocks within a CBRS hex. I'm thinking that's what the we're, what we're scanning. No, this is much much smaller, right? So um, as we're as we're going through, you notice I, I, my driveway. I have a 900 foot driveway out out here in the country. It's all gravel. There's like seven hexes on my driveway, you know. And so it's like making sure I'm checking all of these off. I, I gave my phone to the kids. I said, go walk the fields. Go down to the cow field. Go go back behind. Go 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 to the forest, and they're just just scanning. You know, come back come back after two scans, and then trade off with one of the other siblings. And so, finding ways to do it, finding ways to to make this work, especially with the, this new map, is brilliant. It's super helpful. So I've just actually noticed something on that map. There, we'll be coming right back to that. I've seen some hexes up in Washington, it looks like. So Manny, we will be asking you about that. But before we do, um, there's some questions coming in about understanding some of the latest updates and then also discussing some of the numbers that are actually present in the hexes themselves. Now, before Manny, I let you speak. Again, this is the importance of the dev diaries, right? So taking a look at the dev diaries here, it does give us a brief update surrounding what has recently been done for scan for points, right? So it talks about the um, leaderboards, which Manny, I would love for you to maybe speak on that and how that plays into what we currently have, how that how, how that was deployed. But it also mentions that this feature is designed to optimize the scanning efforts by highlighting both previously scanned areas and those still awarding full points, aiding users in climbing the leaderboards. Now, this is where things get interesting. In addition to the map, we're developing several gamification features for the scan for points experience. Soon users will have the opportunity to undertake missions and unlock achievements within their profiles. So over to you, Manny. Could you talk to us about the leaderboards, what the actual numbers within the hexes mean, and then how will missions look like? You know, what additional game gamification features are in the pipes for mobile? Sure. So I am super, super, super um, uh, entertained and engaged by scan for points, as is everyone else. Like I, I can't wait now to go out for a walk <laughs> because it's so, it's so fun just to just to look at all the hexes and you know but what i really wanted to do is so 
there's a lot of questions that have come in. In fact, I think nearly 100 questions have come in from very various different users who want to participate. Um, so what I want to do is this week, we're going to review those as a team and provide some, some real um, consolidated content that will explain all of it, in, including the minutiae. If you do click on the, um, the, I think it's the three dots or something else, um, you can see the breakdown of the points. But effectively, you get five five points is the maximum amount of points you can get, and that's if you scan a hex well and if it's not been scanned by you or anybody else before. So that's what we're we're looking at. The 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 instruction or command from from us is go out, scan as many hexes that other nobody else has scanned scanned before, and that should be okay. But we'll 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 sort of come back with more with more details on that. Um, in terms of like why it's so important to do this, so what is actually happening when you're scanning when you're scanning a hex? You are you are for us. You're testing the local network, um, and that might be things like uptime, up, upload speed, download speed, ping, etc. And that data is then being recorded, and from that we can tell you we can we can assess how good the local infrastructure is basically. So that's what's happening, and that gets sent away, and then it comes back to us, and we award, we award, we award the points. Um, so that sort of explains what's going on behind the scenes there, and, and why it's super, super important. But that those data can effectively, and this is the power of scan for points, really. Those data. Imagine we've got, you know, currently we've got fifty. I think just over, just under sixteen hundred people that. That are scanning it's, it's doubled since we we released the leaderboard and it's increased even more since we released the map feature imagine the data set that's being built up right now that's unique no one else is going to have that we're going to be able to apply things like artificial intelligence to it to understand you know the movements the relationships between each of the variables the movements etc cetera, etc cetera. And then that resource is super valuable for people that are building applications from for mobile mo, for mobile phones or even building infrastructure. They can now go and beta test their technology or their software on this huge data set that is unique to World Mobile and developed by you. In, in the mean, in the meantime, you're all being rewarded for the value it, pr it provides the those companies. So that is really what's happening. We are changing the game in terms of providing a, a basically a focus group for the biggest telcos in in the space and ourselves we want to be the biggest um yeah so that's 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 basically basically it really um yeah there's a lot more to say on scan for points gamification there's so much i've i've been saying for for weeks and weeks now when i first saw the 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 badges that that uh, are are underway the community is going to love love what what they do i mean the things we can track and the the yeah <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be crazy um and you know i would say keep scanning because um it will be rewarded very shortly i i think you actually just nailed a piece that a lot of the community has been wondering about was like is this all just being done you know on the quote unquote test net or just as a part of a test phase but it sounds like there could be something in it for people that have been scanning so far. So, um, so I think with question for you, Manny, about this, this is something that I, I, I kind of thought of earlier. So let's say the iOS app comes out and we can just start doing scanning for points on that. Right. Well, I have this Google pixel. Can I put my, my did on both phones and, and scan at the same time twice? For example, if I if I told one kid to go this direction, one kid to go that direction, could I be scanning two different devices from the same account and double those points? I think quick we have to check. Back. Yeah, <laughs> we, we have to check child labor laws because Rob's gonna have his kids yeah. working and walking all night. I live on a farm. I can. I mean, wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead, man. Yeah, no, no. The the quick answer to that is 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 no. You have to have it's one one phone, one DID. But we'll we'll release more more over the over the course of next week. <laughs> so that scuff is your plan for, <laughs> for your your bot farm essentially. 
It, it was worth a shot. That was a really good question there. Um, looks like Molten T asking the key question. What's the actual value of the points? So Manny, could you maybe share with us, number one, how the points can be spent, but then number two, anything with the conversion of the points right now when it comes to just the testing aspect right now? Sure, so um, the so if you go in the app already, you can go to the, the shop section and you can see a list of everything, the vouchers that you can, um, you, you can exchange the points for, well, you'll be able to exchange the points for. And those include vouchers um, to exchange to crypto, for example. So if you want to put it into WMT or you want to put it into anything else, that's going to become available. Um, in terms of the exact formula for that, that is obviously not going to be released right now. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say anything about that right now. However, what I'm what I have what I can say is that um, for a while we've been planning a few competitions that are incentivizing people to scan for points. So effectively, those competitions will have a, a, a prize to them. And that should be enough of an incentive, I think, from what I, I am I'm brainstorming at the moment for everybody to, to go out and maybe win a couple of beers every, every Friday night. <laughs> Thank you again for some of the insights and some of the alpha there. And I can tell the viewers, I was not aware of some of that information. So even myself hosting some of this, I'm learning along the way. We do have Cardano with Paul or Paul from Cardano with Paul tuning in here. Paul, it's always a pleasure. Um, we have had you on here uh, a couple of weeks back. It might be good to get you back on and just kind of chat it up and get your perspective on how we're mobile been performing and where you see things going forward. We've got Mark Byers also tuning in. Um, let's see here, Moham Tom thanking us for all the information here. Let's take a couple of just quick minutes just to highlight some questions. Some of them I think we did touch on, but I just want to go ahead and just make sure that the answers are clear. Um, so let's see here. We have a question from Mike, and I'll turn this over to um, Manny here. Any updates surrounding Opan? And when we could see the first air notes popping up in the US, if I'm not mistaken, there's at least five that should be showing up right now in the United States, but any sort of updates surrounding Operation Airnote when we could potentially see the second batch of Airnotes for the U.S. community? So, yeah, of course, this, the second batch of Airnotes, I can tackle that question straight away. That's in, in the planning phase right, the mo right at the moment. Um, and, you know, we'll release the information in, in due course. Um, in terms of batch one, installations underway. Um, all of the Airnode operators are receiving um, direct emails, updating them on their progress. So that is something that they're aware of. Um, and when we have, when we want to, to sort of communicate that more publicly, we, we will. Um, one of the things that I, I guess I, I guess I will say, <laughs> um, is that we know that there's so much demand for, for the next batch. And anybody that has been reaching out to me expressing expressing that demand, I've been diligently um, uh, doing a bit of, you know, digging a bit and <laughs> trying to, 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 to uh, verify the demand, I suppose. Um, and those people will, will get priority um, as well as the people that um, signed up to the whitelist before. So if, you, if you're interested in, in batch two, batch three, batch four, batch five, um, please do reach out and um, we can have a conversation. And Manny, uh, if I add to this a little bit, this is, this is an alpha, um, but it's something that maybe people haven't pieced together yet. Manny, Manny said that uh, the air nodes from batch one are in the installation process. But if you, if you look at the photos uh, that Cal posted from Reno, he went and posted his photo of his air node already installed. Um, we've already seen several, several photos from different locations where those are up. Um, and we know from world mobile, they, they do things right before they announce stuff. And so we know that there are at least five air nodes operational in Reno. Um, we know there's a lot more there, the, 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 some of these are already up. Some of these were probably pre-installed before, before the sale went up. Um, maybe it was for testing purposes or whatnot. So, I mean, there you go right there. That that's not. That's as far as Cal told me, that's not one of the five um, that are showing up. So some of these are already going. Um, some of these are, you know, and the rest are probably getting installed, but um, you know, there, there's a big plan. There's a big demand. Uh, like, like Manny said, they're, they're seeing a massive swell of, of interest in Reno. Um, 
Manny, I don't know. Is we talked about this backstage? I don't know if this is a good time to maybe talk about maybe a, a, a Reno idea that we've been having. If, if you think that's appropriate. Yeah, no, no, for for sure. I just add, I'll just add to to what you said though. Uh, just now, all of the boxes behind Mickey there, and and all of the the carting and and uh, um, you know loading that Christian is doing is not being done for for the media. <laughs> In fact, we're we're only showing a small fraction of it. So, as Rob says, there's a there's a lot going on in Reno now. Um, yeah, Rob, would you like to to take it away on the on on? It's your idea in the end. <laughs> okay, so you know the whole the whole idea behind the Earth Note Alliance was to get people together, to get people talking, get people get people communicating, provide education. We wanted to to find a place where people can come together and do things and learn and be a part of it, and and. So that's been kind of the mission of, of, of Cal, myself, uh, Chef Theo, others. We, we want to find ways to help educate and provide and, and do things. And so that's been just on our minds, whether it's Alliance related or not. It's just, we love World Mobile. And so Cal and I were talking and um, kind of independently had these ideas that we kind of both vocalized to each other at the same time. And, and the idea is there are people that want to be involved absolutely want to be involved. We've talked about this before, different ways to get involved. You can buy the token. You can be an earth node operator. You can be an air node operator. You can be an air node host. Um, some people are going to start their own franchises and, and, and they're going to be the ones that are installing these things in different areas. Right now, there's a great team in Reno doing it, but it's going to, it's going to move out to the rest of the country and eventually other parts of the world. And it's, we, what we don't want to do is we don't want to have to wait until Hey, we, now we're launching in London. Now we're launching in New York or Milwaukee or wherever and, and try and play catch up with it. Some of us, some of us really want to be involved and we want to know what it's going to take to go into it. So, well, what's the best ways to get involved with Aeronode hosting, Aeronode operation, those kind of things, other than just dropping a bunch of money on buying some Aeronodes and having somebody else do it. One is taking the CPI course, you know, to learn how to be a CBRS, um, uh, relay uh, installer, right? A certified professional installer for these things. But what's going to go into it? We don't know. And so we we approached Manny with with this idea, and and Manny loved it. He talked to the team about it. The idea is to do an Aeronode immersion course, and this would be something where basically you pay your own way. You go to Reno. You have the professional install team show you around the actual Aeronodes that are up. Maybe they, you install one with them that you see the start to finish from unboxing to, to up and testing and ready to go. And while it's not going to be a, a, one of these courses that's going to certify you in something necessarily, it's going to be something that you're going to, you're going to see it start to finish. I'm a hands-on guy. You could explain to me all day. You could put it in a book. I'm not going to get it, but if I can, if I can crank a wrench on it, if I can learn how to do something. I'm going to understand. And it's going to be a better idea of, can I handle this when it's time to bring things to Omaha, Nebraska, when it's time to set things up in my, in my, my, my small town out right outside of Omaha, can I do this? Can I operate this? Or do I need to hire somebody out? And so it's going to give a, a, a hands-on education to people that want to get involved, people that want to install people that want to be, do, do the process of being an Aeronode host, Aeronode operator, um, franchisee owner. So, Having, having an immersion course where you fly into Reno for a day or two, you know, something that's all set up. And then all of a sudden now we can say, all right, here's the course. Here's, here's the itinerary. Here's what you're going to learn. Here's what you're going to see. Here's what you're going to actually physically do. And the moment you can do that, you can go back and say, I have a vision. I know what's next. I'm going to be a part of this thing. I can do this. Um, and it's not theoretical at this point. You've actually done it hands-on. And so the more people that we can get excited about this, I believe, especially Manny, you talked about too, trying to do this around a, a batch two or a batch three launch of these things. When, when it's like, Hey, it's about time to, to open your wallets. Do you want to do this? Is this something that you, you know, are we're ready to deploy elsewhere? Are you ready to go? Um, it's going to really, really help you make a sound financial decision. If you want to invest your time, your effort, and your money into doing something like this. So we're talking Reno, Nevada, Aeronode immersion course with the professional team, that's there. Um, again, T TBD, uh, TBA, uh, we're not sure when it's going to happen yet, but it's, it's definitely, it's, 
M Manny was floored by it. He showed it to the team that they all loved it. They talked to the Reno team. They thought it was a great idea. This is a way to get everyone involved. So that, that way we're not relying on Christian and we're not relying on Charles Barnett in order to do everything for us. It's now, now we can really take the power back in our own hands. Thank for you. Sure, for and, sure. Yeah. I was going to say God. Manny, but no, no, no. I, I wanted to turn over to you. Like what were your thoughts when you first heard about this? And um, as you're speaking, I am launching a poll now for the viewers asking them, you know, just trying to get a, a feel um, would the community who's listening in or just viewing right now, would you all be interested in attending a world mobile immersion course? Um, you can go ahead and respond. It's a quick yes or no. Um, we'll dive into those results in just a minute. But what were your thoughts when you heard about this from Rob? Honestly, it's a, a it, it as Rob said, it did floor me the idea. Um, you've got to. So one of the things that I I, I want to emphasize here is what we're building is we're building a platform so that anybody anywhere can build out their own mobile network operation. So naturally, when you're running a, a mobile network, you're going to have to do some work, and that kind that may be a bit daunting for some people but you know the the output of that is that literally anybody can can go onto the website you'll be able to see the areas of of, of connectivity fueled by scan for points like how poor or, or good a, a, an area is you'll be able to go and buy your look at the air nodes that you think would would fit uh, to provide the coverage you'd be able to to contact the hosts that should be available there or even get people to sign up as hosts on the via the platform and then you'll also be able to to have your dashboard see everything that's coming through all of that sort of stuff but you'll have to be you'll have to be um, responsible for maintaining the air node for uh, organizing the installation um, for marketing uh, to to your potential subscribers eventually at the moment well mobile will do, do does this but eventually we'll be giving marketing packages to every single air node operator so they can do it themselves and naturally, that that is basically you're running a business. <laughs> so we want we want Airnode operators to feel comfortable doing that, and that's why the immersion course I think is a is a fantastic idea. And what you know, you you Rob will tell you, you meet anybody on this team, and it's you know everyone so believes in the mission so much that it all it hooks you in straight away. So what better method to to um, cover Reno, cover the United States and beyond, and get a bunch of interesting node operators, people interested in, in becoming node operators in a room and just explaining A to B, this is how you can do it, this is how it works, this is how you set it up, this is how much it's going to make, et cetera. Like, I think it will be a fantastic, fantastic um, thing. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to start planning or ideating, seeing what's feasible, and then hopefully planning to make it happen. Yeah, um, so many comments coming in here. I'm really trying to keep like a single train of thought and I'm getting pulled into so many directions. So I'm going to do my best to recap here. We have the upside stating he's an electric, electrical lineman and he loves the idea of being able to actually climb the poles and install these. And we've talked about this before upside, you know, that could actually be a service that you provide for people that don't feel comfortable doing that, right? Uh, again, I think there's so many ways to contribute to the sharing economy, whether you're a WMT token holder, a staker, an air node operator, an air node host, an earth node operator. There's a lot of ways to put your hands to the plow. And what you just mentioned that with the actual installations, I think is one of those things that will be needed eventually, right? You're talking about thousands of air nodes being installed per state in just one particular country, but imagine being able to fly out into a whole nother country just for the sole purpose of installing air notes, right? Um, so again, really interesting perspective, and I love to hear that. Uh, we've also got, let's see here, um, this is, oh my goodness, there's so many comments, I've, I've got to jump back up here. Let's see, we've got EarthPath looking up flight tickets already. Let's take a look at the poll results here. Um, as it stands right now, 80% stating, yes, they would be interested in joining some sort of air node immersion program. So Rob, I think that's a very telling sign, you know, of whether or not you should be pushing forward. I definitely think that investing the time in this would be huge. And not to mention, right, the networking aspect of things. Um, imagine Mickey, James, um, just everybody, you know, being out there, Mike, Emmanuel, you know, other community members being out there, 
being able to talk with them, you know, see them, shake their hands and potential hosts as well, right? I think this is a really great opportunity for anybody who wants to sort of get a deeper look into World Mobile. Now, one thing that Rob did touch on too was becoming a certified CBRS installer. Now, I'm not sure how closely this aligns with what World Mobile is doing, but I do know that Google does offer a course. And so I'll just quickly pull it up here. It's available on Coursera, but this is to become a CBRS professional installer. And I would assume that this, you know, basically lines up with what you need when it comes to World Mobile. Again, I know that CBRS was here before World Mobile. Um, so I would generally think that this should apply. Uh, Manny, maybe any guidance or just anything that I might be misstating here that you want to clarify here when it comes to this course? No, I think I'm, I'm, I'm looking to take it myself. So I've, I've dived deep into this. Kyle's taken it, I believe. And he says it, it really, really um, gives you an understanding of how, how, the, how nodes work, basically, coverage nodes work, like where they need to be, how they need to fit, et cetera, et cetera. And um, yes, part of part of being an air node operator, you can you can organize for an installation to happen. So right now World Mobile does that in Reno, but you can do it via a third party. But you know, you're running a business. If you can do it yourself, you'll save more on your margin. And you know, that can go into other places, that can go into more air nodes, it can go into the marketing, et cetera. So becoming a, a, a certified professional um, in this field will will help you run your own mobile network better. Thank you. And earlier, you guys had actually mentioned, you know, um, demand in particular areas. I want to just remind the community to jump into Discord if they haven't already to obviously get in touch with the community, but also to make sure that they're heard and have a direct line to you, Manny. So for anybody who isn't aware, Manny is an official member of the World Mobile team. He's the community manager. So if you guys wanna you know, pitch any ideas, if you have any questions or concerns, please jump into their Discord. That's I think the easiest way to get in touch with Manny and the rest of the team there. Um, we've got Dominic Shepard with respect to the CBR certification stating, super easy course. If I can do it, anyone can, very happy to hear that. Um, let's take a closer look at some of these other questions here. And then I want to talk a little bit more about the recent ENO call, right, where there was a lot being said. I think some of that is still under wraps, uh, but let's maybe, you know, disseminate what, what it is that we can share. Um, so let's see here. This did come in quite a bit ago. Um, any updates surrounding the iOS timeline? I believe we already touched on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that one. We had another question from Evolutions about the deployment diary. We did provide that link down below. Um, we did confirm that Ryan will be at the meetup in Amsterdam. And then this isn't actually a question, but a statement. So I've seen more and more comments surrounding a world mobile phone. I'm sure you guys are aware Solana launched their own phone. And I actually received an email in my personal inbox for a project that's aiming to build a phone that uses Cardano technology, but then that's very sort of integrated with the Cardano blockchain. So could we in the near future see any sort of phone product coming out for World Mobile? Manny, I think this is a question for you. Um, I think otherwise Rob and I are probably be speculating. Yeah, I mean, I what I would say to that is it, you know, we're a we're a, a, a telco provider. Um, so, you know, I don't know really. It, it, it's possible, it's possible we go in there, it's possible one of one of the people that become mobile network operators, uh, air node operators, et cetera, they could launch their own phone and have have our eSIM pre-installed and all sorts of advantages. That's it's completely, I guess it's completely open. I don't really have a, we're not building a phone behind the scenes, let's say. We're building the infrastructure to connect all of the phones that anyone wants to build together. <laughs> yeah, with how quickly you guys are able to expand into new sort of services and niches, uh, with the broadband service being one of them, right, as well as the e eSIMs, um, I don't put it out there or I don't think it's it's too far fetched to see a mobile phone, you know, coming down the pipes again, whether that's now, five years from now, when you guys are very well established. Uh, I think once you guys get a lot of people on board, it'll make it that much easier to also pitch a phone, which sort of um, creates like this ecosystem, right, where you've got the world mobile phone, you've got the data plans, you've got the eSIM, and you can basically just use world mobile from a to z when it comes to any of your telco services um interesting question coming in here from james so he would mentioned that he recently purchased in batch one so james um congrats as a official ano anode operator and he was considering taking a trip out to reno 
in the next few weeks. I know that the team was just in Reno. We just showed Cal as well as Jeff um, and ENO who were there. Uh, Manny, is the team planning on heading back into Reno anytime soon? Um, and then I want to follow up with an additional question that just came in from James as well. Sure. So, I mean, not that I'm a, not that I'm aware of the European, you know, side of the, the 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 contingent of the team, but there is always a presence in Reno. So, if somebody wants to go go out there, and you know, I said to James, reach out, reach out to me. If you want to go out there, and you can you can get there. The team is always willing to welcome people and have a tour of the office. You can tour the nodes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Perfect. Perfect. Um, a follow up here. Um, Web3 Cat, most definitely, what is the best way to reach out? As we just mentioned there, um, jump into the Discord. You are able to get in touch with many that way. Um, and thank you for all your contributions, right? You've got a, 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 you have the tokens, of course. You've got a vault. You've got farms and air node. And your next goal is an earth node. So um, you're really contributing from all facets here. James Watson, thank you for tuning in. Um, we've got an additional um, comment coming in here from JP Vin Vincenzo Jacques. Um, Thank you for tuning in. I know you mentioned being on the treadmill earlier. Um, these live streams do go from about an hour to an hour and a half. So hopefully you guys are able to get things done while you're listening and getting some of this alpha here. Uh, but you just completed your first scan. So congrats and welcome aboard into the World Mobile community. We've got Batman, fellow, um, I believe it's, I think Batman might be an Earth Node operator, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, we, we've met in person, most recently sitting down together with him and his son, who's also a content creator in Denver, Colorado, following the recent rare bloom. So can cities put up, I assume he's talking about air nodes, on their water towers? Manny, I think that's a question for you. Is there you know, any reasoning why they would not want to do that? Um, I assume, again, those would be really great vantage points for a city if they understood some of the benefits that come with actually operating an air node. That's that's an interesting question. Um, this is this is again. This is this might be a, a good um, a reason to take the CPI course because you learn you learn these things. You learn about placements of nodes. I'm not too sure. You know, just this is my non-expert brain talking now. I'm not too sure what the feasibility of putting electrical gear <laughs> next to next to water. Um, but I, if it's safe, I don't see why not. Any any vantage point is a is a is good for coverage. Awesome. Okay. I think that might do it here for some of the questions and comments. We've got Raul tuning in here from Australia. Raul, welcome aboard. Joey, thank you very much here for the kind words. Okay. So as I was just taking a look myself earlier on the official Airnode website, we now have Washington with some some action going on. So let me just quickly share my screen here. Um, Manny, before I put my, before I misspeak, I'll, I'll give it over to you. I had not noticed these hexagons popping up in Washington. Rob, I'm not sure if you've been keeping up with this and you maybe saw this, but could you maybe highlight what is going on here for anybody who hasn't been keeping up with the deployment of air nodes um, with respect to Washington specifically? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, is it with Rob or me? <laughs> I can go. Um, yeah. yeah no, so okay. the Washington, the wash. So what we've done. So if people have been paying keen attention to um, operate the Operation Anode site, AnodeWorldMobile.io, we've made a few changes, and more are to come. So things are faster rendering. We've buckled in um, uh, some some nodes just to make it very easy to to navigate. And this basically is a MAV 100. So it's Colin in Washington State. He's one of our partners. And yes, he obviously is expanding. I think they've got nine or 10 air nodes out there right now. So this is the partner coverage. But we want to, we think it's best to communicate it as part of our ecosystem as well, uh, because that is kind of the, 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 the sort of, um, uh, I guess, initiative that he's building out there in Washington. Thank you for the clarification and again really showing how committed world mobile is to onboarding those partners and giving them the, vis the visibility so thank you to colin and the rest of the mav 100 team i also got to meet and actually sit down with them um right before they got their first air node shipped to them this was again about a year ago in denver colorado so awesome 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 stuff there okay so once a month there is a eno call the last one just took place, I want to say, about 48 hours ago. 
again, before I misspeak, I want to let the right people here with the um, right knowledge as to what to share and what not to share, bring that out for us, right? So um, maybe I'll let Rob kick things off here. We, we have had some conversations backstage and through Discord as to how much we can actually mention, right? But then I also want to turn it over to Manny to highlight some things that are coming down the pipes as well. So um, Rob, do you maybe just kind of mind recapping for anybody who isn't aware of what the ENO calls are, but then touching on some of the updates that we can share with the community when it comes to the latest call. Yeah, so the the EarthNode operators are people who have purchased either originally enough tokens to reserve an EarthNode NFT. It was 100,000 WMT, and uh, we were able to, to do that well over a year ago, get those reservations in place. Um, otherwise, people that have purchased them off the secondary market from those who have decided they don't want to do this anymore. But the Earth nodes are going to be the part of the, the blockchain that, that gathers all the information in, uh, from, from the telco side, from the different partners that will be on, on the IA chain, and then condense them down into blockchain format and kind of put that fi finalization layer on there. So it's basically, you, if you have an Earth node NFT, that is the permission for you to operate a computer that you'll run basically to set up or, or you, you, I'm sorry, you'll set that up. You will, you will run this and help, help make the blockchain side of, of this into, uh, um, get all the data down to finality for the blockchain. I'm not making a lot of sense right now. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, so a, as an earth node operator, you, you will, you'll have the ability to, to operate this, this program. Well, um, what they do is they want to try and keep us in the loop as the things that are going on um, when there's any updates, things that can happen for a long time. We're doing a, uh, a call every month. There's been a couple of delays and, and different, different things we've had to pivot on. Um, and, and, and so we, it's been a couple months in, in, in the works, but we, we had a, a call about two days ago and it was, um, it was a really good call. It was, it was a lot of people um, came in there with some really, really high hopes because we've, we've all bought into world mobile, believing in, in what, what this could be um, wanting to part participate and be a part of the sharing economy and, and, and help, you know, help connect the unconnected. And it, it feels like, you know, I don't think people doubt it's going to happen. It's just, there's been some delays. There's been some things that have taken time and, what it came down to was basically um, people, people were ready. People were kind of chomping at the bit and they came and, and, and the, the team Mickey was there. Emmanuel, um, I'm sorry. Emmanuel was there. And Tony was there. Mike, uh, they came and they delivered and they, a lot of things have been building. I say, I say this all the time when world mobile is quiet, watch out because what they're about to unleash is, is going to be crazy. Um, they've been quiet for a little while. And, and they, they finally, they gave us a whole lot of information. They updated us on, on the, 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 the blockchain and how that's building. Um, you know, initially we, there was going to be something that was going to be done solely on Cardano um, as, as like a side chain. And then that, that pivoted a little bit because um, Cardano wasn't, wasn't ready yet. So they were trying to figure something out with, um, with Cosmos SDK. And then they realized almost immediately with Cosmos that they had to um, tweak it right away. Otherwise it, it couldn't handle the load that uh, we were going to bring to it with a thousand earth nodes and potentially multiple centuries, you know, kind of like the, the relays that we have on the Cardano blockchain. It was just going to be too much. Um, and so then, there's other parameters that didn't fit and they, they realized, you know what, we could, we could try and force this all day. We're not sure that's going to, going to fit what we need. So then they took a step back and they realized, is there another way? Is there something we can do? Because remember they're building something that has not been done before. This is, this is a huge endeavor and they don't want to build the whole thing with duct tape. It's, it's not a good foundation for it. when you, when you go into cosmos and it's, it's fine for what people need to do with it, but, it's not right for world mobile. And so you go in there with, with, with that and immediately you're, you're jury rigging this thing just to make it, make it quasi functional for what we need. And so they, they came out and they gave us the new, the new consensus protocol. They, they talked about how it's going to work. They, they gave a lot of information about um, what is going to happen once the IA chain 
is ready to go and how the partners are going to uh, come in with, with all of this. And um, there's just, there's a lot of opportunity. And so they really explained why the delay they explained what they're hoping to build, how open this is going to be. And then they kind of gave some, some ideas of what the opportunities are going to look like uh, because, because they have, they have taken this new direction um, and it's going to be honestly bigger and better than we ever thought possible when we all bought into this a year and a half, two years ago. So it, very, very exciting to, to hear these things. Um, I do want to talk about the Aya chain, but Manny, I don't know if you want to jump in first and do do these things. We've I've already talked to Manny about what I wanted to, to say about it, make sure that I'm not leaking the wrong information, but I can do that now or I can wait if you want to go, go first, Manny. Yeah, go, go ahead. I'm, I'm enjoying listening to, to, to how enthused you were by it. I think that's, that's, that's really what I want people to hear. I want people to hear from the ENOs how impactful this call was on them. Yes. You know, we've heard for a long time that running the earth node is not just going to be about processing the data from those phone calls or text messages that people all over the world are using. We've told there's going to be other things, these value added services these, these different things that we can do, storage as a service, VPN, all these different things that we'll be able to plug into our earth nodes to help process the data to make more money to do different things. And um, what they said about what, what's going to happen with Aya is, uh, honestly, I, I, I knew some of these things, but the way they expounded on it was, was amazing. And so what I want to do, Fareed, if you don't mind, um, I want to talk about what we already know, and then put a little bit of my own theory on it um, just to show what the possibilities are. It doesn't mean that what I'm going to say is going to happen necessarily, but this is huge. And this it's not just huge for earth node operators. This is huge for everybody in the community. Um, <laughs> I can't believe it. Actually, I told my wife about it and her floor or her, her, her job about hit the floor. Um, this is, this is amazing. So, we know that the IA chain is going to be, um, that's going to be the blockchain that that we're going to use for, for world mobile, right? WMT, um, the earth nodes are going to be on there processing the data, but the earth nodes are going to be basically, that's, that's the brain, that's the backbone of the entire IA chain, not just for world mobile, but for anybody else that comes in. Okay, so let's just forget about what World Mobile is going to do for a sec with, with the connecting a billion people. Let's forget that, that you know about what World Mobile is going to do with the, uh, the sharing economy with the air nodes and with with um, the, the the token and the price and the potential for things to go up. Let's forget about all that stuff because we could talk about that for hours. And believe me, I have. <laughs> you guys have heard it. Um, let's just talk about Aya and what is what it's going to mean for this community. Okay, um, Aya is going to do more than just world mobile. Okay. Aya is going to be the blockchain that we're going to bring other people onto all these other MNOs, all these other companies that say, Hey, we're in telecoms or we're in this service or we're in this area. We want to incorporate blockchain. We don't have the time, the resources, the knowledge to build it, but we want to be a part of it. World mobile will help them build that out. It'll help them. And we'll, we're going to host it for them. Everything those companies are going to do that data is going to come to the earth node operators and the earth nodes are going to process it for the blockchain. So the IA is going to be more on the IO blockchain than just world mobile. There will be different projects, different segments doing things, okay? Let's just look at uh, at Minutes Network for a minute. Minutes Network, as a lot of people know, what is, is founded by, by Josh Watkins, Mickey's brother. Josh is a co-founder of World Mobile, just left recently to do this Minutes Network. Um, they're bringing all their blockchain stuff to the IA network, the earth node operators are going to finalize all those transactions, all the stuff that's coming from minutes, the earth nodes are going to, going to handle. Okay. So that's more revenue from a different source for earth node operators. Um, think about this. though as a partner, okay. Think about what minutes is bringing. Let, let's think about what they've said, what they've done and what they're going to do still. Minutes has come in and they, they have given us many, many, many opportunities. They, they allowed us early access to their early token sale, their token sale, the, the public offerings would be 30 cents a token. 
early sales, 24 cents. They allowed us access to it as a community if we wanted to get in. Early node reservations, you can could, you could reserve nodes. So what Minutes Network's going to do is they have their own software, their own processes, and they're going to have their own nodes. They're going gonna, to gonna grab all that information and condense it. And then those nodes are going to send it to our nodes on the blockchain, our, and we're going to put it on the blockchain. Okay, so they're, they're going to have their own things going and they're going to feed us information. They've allowed us early access to be node operators for them. Anyone in the community, you don't have to be an earth node operator. So now we can buy their tokens at a discount, right? Number go up. Great. Awesome. We can get become a node operator at a discount by buying, buying the tokens necessary to operate one of their nodes. I paid 25.5 cents. Some people that got in earlier paid 24 cents. The token isn't even for sale yet, but it's going to start out at 30 cents. So we're getting discounts. We're getting early access to these things to run their networks that have nothing to do with, you don't have to be an earth node operator. You can be anybody and, and operate one of their nodes, feed it to an earth node, right? So now we have, a, a, we have access to their community. We have access to their programming. We have access to be a part of their network on top of the earth node. So the earth nodes are going to get paid for doing the work but you can be a part of minutes. You can own minutes tokens. Um, the unity node that's going to, that's going to help, help them to process and help them to do things with their network to cut costs, to provide additional coverage. And all you need is a cell phone for that. Right. And, and, and M Manny's working on things right now in other countries that they're already in three different countries doing testing for this stuff. Uh, the Philippines, Nigeria, and I believe somewhere else. You, you're going to be able to, to just have a phone. You don't have to buy anything. You just have a phone and run it, and you're going to be able to earn from it. Um, so they're providing a sharing economy outside of World Mobile, but they're allowing us access to this. What's the other thing that they promised all of us? If you are an Earth, or if you're a World Mobile token holder, or you are a um, an Earth Node operator, you're going to get an airdrop of tokens from from minutes. You're going to get free stuff, right? Free tokens. Um, that have a have a, a a dollar value, so we can participate in their network. We can we can buy their token at a discount. We can help run nodes from our cell phone that don't cost anything. And if you're a member of the World Mobile community, you can get free tokens. Okay, now I'm sure that that it, it I'm sure that Mickey and them had this had this in place, this plan of of saying, hey, you're going to come use our stuff. You're going to take care of our community. You know, they're going to they're going to have to buy into it. So think about what's going to happen when we have other, other projects coming on. Some projects might have tokens. Some might not. Some might have things for us to do. Some might not. But Mickey, you know that Mickey, you know that the team, are they're not going to say, hey, come use our stuff, pay Mickey a big fat check, and that's going to be it. No. They've shown historically that's not what their aim is. Their aim is to take care of the sharing economy. So when people come in, they want to use Aya. When people come in and they want to use this blockchain and they want us to help out by the settlement layers, the earth node operator is going to make more money. The community is going to have more opportunity. And you, you know something like this is going to happen. They're going to say, hey, you need to do a buy-in. You need to buy into what we're doing. That might mean maybe they have to put a big fat check down and say, say hey, you know what? You need to buy 10 million WMT tokens and hold it for two years in a smart contract. So, something where you're going to help us stabilize the price, lower lower liquidity on the market, and and which is going to benefit everybody here. You know, they're they're not going to pay Mickey Watkins money. They're going to have to buy into this network to help secure and validate what we're doing if they're going to use our blockchain. So there's going to be so many different opportunities to participate, to invest in, and to earn from, as well as getting potentially sometimes some free stuff from all these partners. Now imagine what minutes is doing. Not again, they're not all going to be the same, but imagine 15, 20, 30 different partners coming in. Maybe some have their own token. Maybe some don't, maybe some just have a big buy-in. So you're going to see liquidity um, lower because it's going to be locked up. Price might increase. You're going to see opportunities for early access to some of these companies that maybe have completely different spectrums than what world mobile is doing. But now all of a sudden, you are able to participate because you are a world mobile community member for these companies that are coming in and using world mobile resources. It, the opportunities there for Aya and what it means for the community, not just the earth node operators 
is going to be humongous. And I think the more the more you're able to get involved, whether that be through air nodes, token holding, earth node operations, different things, just being here, you, you, you're going to have an opportunity because you're part of the sharing economy, because you've bought into the vision and they're going to, they're going to prove it. Um, and, and, and they, they, they shared some of that stuff in the call. A lot of the, 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 a lot of the speculation I'm laying out right now is because we've already seen it with minutes network, just putting the, putting the pieces together. Minutes is already doing this. Okay. We're going to see that with, with other things because we know that they're coming into the IA chain. So I just think the opportunities are going to be immense once, once this gets rolling and once we get this blockchain up and going. Very, very nice summary there. Um, I want to take a break before I jump into Manny to get his perspective and just remind you guys again, make sure to follow both of these gentlemen here. You can hear the passion um, literally oozing out of them as they're speaking about world mobile. Um, as you were speaking there, Rob, you mentioned a really interesting word, which was partner. And what you've highlighted is how much bigger I can be than just serving, you know, the world mobile mission and the world mobile idea, right? Talking about other potential deep end protocols, other potential telecoms networks that may benefit from integrating and using the tech stack that I is going to bring along to where they don't have to do double the work, but then it also creates somewhat of a mutually beneficial ecosystem, right? Where and this reminds me literally of like the partner chains model, which Charles has talked about, right? Where SPOs, aka Earth Node operators, right, can now earn additional benefits based off of other quote unquote services, right? Tapping into the strength of the ENOs. So very similar to how SPOs would benefit from operating nodes that would service or um, verify blocks being written to the midnight network, right? So when you were kind of explaining that, that was like the parallel that came to my mind. Now, well, there's been a lot of questions coming in here. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, the one thing that I, I kind of missed there, but it was, it was on my mind is last week we did an Earth Node Alliance space and Charles just showed up and talked for 40 minutes. It was amazing. Um, but, but Charles was talking about uh, how how they, you know, he, it's, he, he, he Char Charles has said, basically, you know, he's not worried. World mobile is not abandoning Cardano. They haven't broken up. It's not a Cardano is, is, is in a state of they're building, they're expanding. I mean, the midnight protocol midnight is not going to be straight up a, uh, on Cardano. It's going to be a partner chain. And he talked about how world mobile is building something that's going to be um, very, very similar. Very, very similar to what, 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 what midnight is doing. So Aya midnight, they're going to, they're going to run in parallel in, in some respects, they're going to be able to talk to each other. They're going to be able to talk to, to, to Cardano. They're, they're going to be able to talk to these other, other chains. Um, you know, I saw a comment in there about, you know, minutes is ETH based, you know, Mike's absolutely right there. World mobile is building a, a, a multi, a multi blockchain, multi chain wallet that you're going to be able to just to store a lot of different things in. You know, and that that's that's in the testing phase, I believe, on the roadmap. There there are going to be different different chains coming in, bringing different things, and that's what I love is when when World Mobile sets out to do something, they're trying to connect everyone together worldwide, but also in the crypto space. And so it, it's not going to be a thing where oh, you want to come over here, change your ETH to Cardano, or change your Cardano to Polkadot, or change your Polkadot to Solana, or what? That, it's not going to be that way. It's going to be hey. Here's where we're at. Bring what you have. We're going to make it work and we're going to make it beneficial for everybody because we are world mobile. We're going to be at the center of this. And so as, as, as they build out and as they do these things, you know, just like Charles said, it's, it's not a, it's not an us versus them kind of a thing. It's, it's going to be, Hey, we're, what world is doing with Aya, what, what Charles is doing with midnight, they're going to, it's going to work. It's going to work. They'll be able to talk to the, to the different chains, to the different things. Um, again, we don't have the documentation. We don't know what it looks like, but everyone's very, very passionate about the direction that this is going. And I think it's very important to realize that this is beyond one chain. It, even, even for Charles to come out and say that, you know, Charles, Charles is building something on a different consensus protocol than, than what Cardano is built on. And Charles is, Charles is Cardano, you know, 
And so he recognizes the, 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 the different aspects needed to make this thing work. And he's, he's all for what he's doing with, with midnight, but he's also an, an avid supporter of what world mobile is doing. Thank you. And we're getting more and more questions and comments coming in here. Um, Manny has been quite, he's been quiet. I'll, I'll just keep it to that. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, there's some questions about how Cardano plays into all of this, right? Um, I think there's just so much to talk about. Um, maybe let, let's just rewind a little bit, Manny, and I'll give the both of you guys a little bit of time to sort of gather your thoughts. Um, so this is about 30 minutes ago coming in from Touche here from Alaska. When are you coming here? Um, I think this might be a quick one. Any insights that you can give us here, Manny? So no, no timeline, but the plan is to cover the United States. So Alaska is part of the United States. Thank you. I appreciate that. Follow up coming in from Touche again. Will an air staff be able to handle negative 50 degrees like they have there in Alaska? Um, really interesting question. I, I'm not sure if I can respond to that. But Manny, if you feel like you can, feel free to go ahead and do so. So that is the GSMA um, bringing new telecoms to the sky case study that details the, the sort of specifications um, of the Aerostat testing in Mozambique. And obviously, you know, Rob has been on his adventures as well. And we've got extra data from that. So if you want to read the case study, um, that will give you a good idea of, 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 of how the Aerostat can manage in the wild. Thank you. Follow up from F is Minutes a competitor? Um, as you just heard there, they're far from it. If anything, their partner piggybacking off of some of the core infrastructure that World Mobile has, right? And as Rob mentioned, um, being able to run some of the Unity nodes, excuse me, Unity nodes, and also the upcoming Minutes airdrop for World Mobile token holders. So I think it's anything but a competitor. Um, they're really here with a very similar mission, but focusing on different markets. Um, interesting question coming in from Molten T. What's up with the ISP deal with MAV100? I'm not sure. Is there an official deal actually set up with MAV100? Could you maybe reiterate their sort of partnership or collaboration with World Mobile? So I think this is referring to um, a recent deal that Colin has done in Washington with another ISP. Mm -hmm. So as I understand it, um, he's, he's planning to bundle all of these things together so you can create like really a really decentralized like community out in, in Washington. So that includes us providing the mobile insect connectivity. There's obviously a deal with the ISP, which I think he's done an announcement in Discord. So that's probably the best place to get the details for, for that. Thank you. Um, I was way off the ball with that one. Thanks for uh, for keeping up and keeping me honest there, Manny. Um, another good question coming in from Ada Lovelace. Any plans to integrate the Explore directly into the World Mobile app? I could definitely see that being um, a huge bit of information there, right? Being able to pop up or jump into WMT scan or jump into the AirNode map directly from within the app. So Manny, any thoughts surrounding that? Yeah, I mean, um, that would be great. <laughs> so that's all I'll say on that. <laughs> Sounds like they might they might be working on that. Um, I'm trying to read between the lines here. Got an interesting question coming in from Mundelbert. Not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Would ZK off-chain proof Plutus V3 work? Not sure I understand that question there, but we do have a follow-up. Will value-added services use the WM token to pay the network? Yes, um, yes. Manny, you want to take that one? Yeah, yeah, it will. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. You, the option will be to pay, you, you know, you can either pay in fiat for your, your services or you can pay in WMT or any other crypto of your choice. That's, yeah. Perfect. Um, okay, so now that we've got some of those older questions lined up, we've kind of gotten the same question here surrounding how Cardano plays into the World Mobile mission. Um, again, I know that in one of our previous streams, we've discussed some of the FUD, you know, with just projects in general going multi-chain. Um, most recently, Cornucopius has been, you know, um, in the spotlight with their expansion into base. And again, I want to be clear here. There's a difference between moving out of Cardano and expanding to another network. Um, what we've seen from Cornucopius was an expansion, but we've seen with World Mobile has also been expansion. Um, there's been nothing surrounding World Mobile actually leaving Cardano. And as Rob mentioned very clearly before, this is a multi-chain project, right? So it will have um, 
its its hands in different ecosystems. But I don't want to speak for the team here, especially with Manny here. So Manny, I want to give you an opportunity to potentially just clarify where Cardano fits in the scheme of things and to just kind of help the community get a better understanding of that. Sure. So, I mean, I say quite clearly, like the, the vision for World Mobile for IAChain has always been multi-chain. So it's to take the best parts of every ecosystem and leverage that with the specific expertise of our team um, to be able to support a telco network that can support 3 billion people. So for that to happen, we need to be able to um, uh, to talk to every, to you know, to talk to every chain, see what's going on in every chain, but to leverage the the best features of those. I mean, for me personally, Cardano has um, uh, the, the best staking in the industry, literally. And, you know, something like, like that, um, you know, would be useful to encourage people in the Web3 space to get on, to be onboarded into our mission. But you know, we we we've got to. So I'll say I'll say this um, uh, uh, as part of my answer as well. Within the Web three crypto space, and I'm crypto native, but I've never subscribed to to this part of it. We've got to get away from tribalism. Um, we have to we the, the software that that sort of Satoshi Nakamoto uh, created, the block blockchain software, um, uh, is great. It runs. It, it it does it does what it needs to do. Um, but the reason why we have such a, um, a sort of, um, uh, I don't know, like 20, 30,000 different blockchains is because um, the original Bitcoin devs or the community of Bitcoin devs didn't want to in include programmability. And so that led to the creation of Ethereum. And then obviously, you know, you had Charles Hoskinson, which, OK, well, I want to improve this because it's better. I want to improve Ethereum because it's better. They won't let me do it, so I'm going to create my own chain. But really, we're arguing about software. The end user doesn't care about how things work. They care that their, their network, whatever service they're using, is um, reliable and is cheap. And so if you look on, you know, I encourage you guys to go, go to World Mobile's broadband site in both Tanzania and in the US no mention of blockchain at all but that's that's okay <laughs> you know we can it can happen in the background those users are going to care about the, the speed of their internet um the cost of their internet and the reliability of their internet and so i want to just reiterate world mobile is building something that is going to take the best of all software in this space and use it to support the three billion unconnected Nicely put there. Hope that gives the community some clarity. Let's pivot back over into the ENO discussion. So we talked about a keyword there, which was the partners, but there's also some other stuff there. Again, I don't want to step anywhere that I shouldn't be stepping, but Manny, can you maybe talk about how you guys are following in the footsteps of some of the most successful ecosystems with the Teleco twist? So what I can say regarding regarding that is that World Mobile is about to become a lot more um, well for the for the blockchain side of it at least a lot more Web three native, so that all of the all of the areas of Web three that you would normally associate with a, a, a Web three crypto project, we're working on those things. And we're working on those things in conjunction um, with a series of partners across marketing, deep in, blockchain, and telco, all of which are top tier. So yeah, we are we're in the set, we're following in in I won't name the the, the projects we're following in the footsteps of, um, but you know, I I've spent nearly 11 years in this space and this is the biggest thing i've i've ever seen huge huge news coming in from the team um i do want to quickly just go ahead and plug in i believe there should be a monthly call coming up am, am i correct in stating that yes yes so if anybody has any questions for the team please make sure to get that on your calendar. I'll be providing more content surrounding web mobile in the coming days, making sure to reiterate that. Um, but I want to take a moment here just to give, I, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this correctly. Um, 
uh, Alain you or Alan you I'm, I'm not sure if, if I'm pronouncing that correctly either way huge thanks here for the super chat stating absolutely agreeing with um, Manny they're talking about tribalism and multi-chain right tribalism is the crypto world dividing itself against the anti-crypto world united we stand divided we fall appreciate you very much um, let's see here Alan, you. Okay, perfect. Perfect. And that's what I wanted to say, but it was just like, it's all one word. So it's, it, I was second guessing myself. So Alan, thank you very much there for the super chat. Um, I've seen you popping up on a lot of my content very recently. I definitely do appreciate that. Um, okay. So let's see here. Um, we can probably take a couple more questions um, from the community here, but we do have to begin to kind of wind down. I've actually got a interview coming up at the top of the hour. And so uh, if there's no additional questions that come in, I'll probably turn it over to Rob and Manny for closing thoughts ahead of the upcoming community space. So maybe we give Rob an opportunity to kind of just recap how um, the recent couple of days or weeks have been for him. We'll turn it over to Manny. And if there's any questions that pop in between then, we'll go and try to knock those up before the top of the hour. So Rob, over to you. So, you know, about two weeks ago, I got on a got on a plane and went to a a location to check out Aeroset launch and testing. And I got to spend a lot of time with with a friend of mine, um, a co-founder, Emmanuel G, uh, as opposed to Emmanuel Y, we have here. Um, so Emmanuel and I got to spend a lot of time together. It was with James Tag, and we got to spend. I got to learn a lot about the procedures for the procedures and capabilities of an aerostat. Uh, it, it was, a, it was a great time. It was something that was very inspiring to me to, to know that um, this is the type of thing that we're working on. This is, this is, this is how grand scale um, this, this portion of this, this small portion of what world was doing, how, how grand scale it is. And you start to magnify that by the entire by the entire project, the entire plan. And it's, it's overwhelming. I came back and I was, I was worn out. I mean, I, I slept more the night I got back than I did the entire time I was there. Um, these guys go and they go and they go. Uh, in fact, many times, uh, James Tag kept saying, all right, James needs to eat or James is going to get really cranky. And they would just literally go to the point, like the point of exhaustion, push themselves a little bit more, take a break to recharge and then go back at it. Um, you know, the first time we got there, we got back to the hotel at midnight and we had to be back to the site at five in the morning. Um, so it was, it was inspiring to see these guys work, to see how tirelessly they, 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 they do things, but how efficiently they're able to make things happen. Um, it, I think it's a micro, it's, it, 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 it's, it, I don't know what the word microcosm is micro. Uh, it, 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 it I, I don't know. It just, <laughs> Sorry, it just shows you how how talented these guys are, how 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 good they are at what they do, and how big the vision is. Um, that they, they work tirelessly, nonstop, to make things happen. Um, as we said for a while, uh, they've been quiet. Mickey wasn't talking a whole lot. We didn't see a whole lot from from um, the team, from Antonio, from these guys. They had their heads down, and then they just unloaded. This past week, they unloaded. So. You know, they were obviously doing some traveling because Cal was in Reno. Uh, Charles Hoskinson was in Reno. Um, these guys went to Reno and they were they were making sure that things were on track there. They're meeting with partners. Mickey was taking calls at 1 30, 3 30, 5 30 in the morning when he was in, 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 in the country. They're constantly building, constantly working. You, you see this happen and you're just, you're inspired. And then, then it comes out. We had the the E and O call this past you know a couple of days ago, and just what they what they unrolled for everybody, and you see how big the scale is just for the blockchain side. We're not talking telecoms. We're not talking country expansion. We're talking we're going to run like like Manny said, run some code on a computer, but it's going to be so big that others are going to want to come in and be a part of this thing, and it's going to benefit everyone that's involved in this economy. Like, like we said. Minutes Network is going to do an airdrop of tokens from the Minutes Network to everyone who holds WMT, not just the operators, not just the CEO, not just the staff, everybody who's a part of this. And I think we're going to see that for more, for more of these, these partners. I think there's going to be many, many opportunities 
it doesn't matter what your bank account looks like. It doesn't matter if if you're technically capable to to run an, an earth node, if you have the ability to to buy an air node, there's gonna be something for you to do here. Um I, I'm I'm thrilled. Like I said, I I, I went out and I bought a, a a used cell phone just so I could go scan for points and I'm making things happen and I'm helping the network, I'm doing things to help participate, and I'm earning in the process. You know, th- there there's such a thriving ecosystem here you know we talked about um the air nodes and and how many air nodes are showing up in the united states and the answer is five well we know that 20 of them sold it at, at, on batch one and according to cal they're up and running okay so at least some of them are so again world mobile has things that they haven't even released yet that we don't know the data. We don't know. We don't know everything coming in. We don't know how many subscribers there are. We don't know how many daily users there are. We know what WMT scan shows. It's more. It's a lot more. They're holding back because they want to release things at the right time. They're rolling out this expansion. They're growing at, at a pace that they can they can sustain. Um, and they're working tire tirelessly to get this thing done. And so I'm just, I'm inspired. I'm encouraged by, by the people that they have, by the people I've been able to spend time with and the people I've been able to watch from afar. Um, it's a great team. And as, as great as these guys are, we have an amazing community of people that, that have bought into this vision, that's bought into this dream and show up daily, whether it's on Twitter, on Discord, Telegram, people that are making things happen um, with, with, with their evangelism, with their, with their wallets, with their passion. Um, I, I I think that as this grows, you're going to see a a massive swell of people coming from other, other crypto communities. You're going to see people that don't know a thing about crypto, like Manny said, coming in and we're going to have this incredible opportunity to connect with people and to move this thing forward. And that's what I'm looking most looking forward to the most is is being with everybody um that's why we do these things that's why we suggested the air node immersion course to manny in the first place that's why we that's why we we push for rare evo so hard we're gonna have a booth at rare evo we're gonna be on the floor the the world mobile community is coming to las vegas and we're in in august and we're gonna be there and we're gonna be hanging out and it's gonna be everybody high fives and hugs we're gonna be talking about things you're gonna you're gonna see and i i've already seen this happen at every conference and convention i've been to when the world mobile community gets together you're going to see partnerships form you're going to see business plans form you're going to see friendships form i I, you know we watch mav 100 materialize in front of us they bought the first earth node at at, at rare evil last year um the earth node alliance the 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 community group the first community group of uh, of the world of world mobile it was started because of a meetup that chef theo envisioned in 2022 at, at rare, at rare bloom. This is, this is where things happen. You get together in person. It's great to talk on the internet. It's great to do all these things, but when you show up in person, you get to be around each other. You get to connect with somebody and, and reality hits and it's amazing. And so we're looking forward just to, just to more. This community is great. This team is great. It's, it's something there. I, you know, I wear, I wear some world mobile clothes every day. I, I, I have a hat or a shirt or something I'm wearing every day. I, it's on my mind at all times. Um, I spend more time on the internet than I do at work. <laughs> um, dealing with, you know, just looking up stuff, seeing what's going on. It, 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 it's, it's almost obsessive how, how big this is and how much you want to be a part of it. It, it. It's a great thing. And some of the best people I, I've had the privilege of knowing in my 42 years of life, or I've met because of world mobile and that includes you Fareed Manny. That includes you as well. I, I, I care deeply about you guys. You guys are incredible people, incredible human beings. Um, you're passionate, you're extremely talented and I'm honored to, to call you friends and I'm honored to be on the same stage with you guys. And, and you know, guys like Paul who, who, who was posting earlier, um, amazing people all over the globe that we we're doing things with, we're doing things together. Um, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to, to, to what's next and I can't wait to be a part of it. And I'm so excited that we get to do these things together. So thank you very much. You guys. You're always welcome, Robin. The feeling is more than mutual. Um, we appreciate you, your enthusiasm, your knowledge, and just your, your, um, ability, right. To not, not just support world mobile, but onboard everybody else that's excited or curious into this growing ecosystem. I think what Samuel O. Sanchez states here 
um, really captures that nicely, right? So not many crypto projects can see that that you can see are doing real work like this within the blockchain space. This looks like an open door into something bigger, and I'm very excited about it. And yeah, I mean, uh, Samuel, that, that's what we're doing here is, is talking about something that we're excited about, something that's tapping into solving a real tangible problem, which is connecting the unconnected, providing fair coverage and providing the ability for people to take advantage of services, right? Just like we're streaming right now on the internet, some people don't have that luxury. Some people don't have the ability to do that. And so to be able to um, allow for other people to tap into that economy, I think should, should be a human right. Um, that said, as we get ready to wind things down here, again, we do have Rob and Manny. Make sure to follow them down. Um, their links to X are down below in the video description. Um, Manny, can you give us any closing thoughts here and maybe just quickly you know, recap some of the main points from the ENO call, I'm seeing some comments here in the chat about, you know, wanting to hear about that alpha, et cetera. But could you highlight some of those key points? Again, I know a lot of it is still under wraps, but I also want to just remind the community that there will be an upcoming space with Mickey Watkins, Mike, um, Manny, et cetera. And that's where I think that there will be able to spill a little bit more of this information. But um, over to you, Manny, for your closing thoughts. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess, you know, what I took away from the ENO call, and I often listen to these calls, you know, I, I do intro, I do, I do do the AMAs, and sometimes I have an input in the content. But I often let the key stakeholders just go on and, and I listen with as much intent as, as Rob and other ENOs. What I took away from that call was that World Mobile is, is, following is is now tangibly following in the footsteps of some of the greatest projects in in this space and that's from for me i've seen a lot of projects in this space that go up and fail um and um yeah that's that for me is 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 the biggest thing um but with uniquely with a telco twist we are the first blockchain project in this space building something specifically for telecommunicate telco operators and they're all coming to us asking to be a part of it. So, you know, Mickey has mentioned mentioned conversations that he's had at, at, at MWC Barcelona and all of that. Um, there's more of those that have happened and more to be to be released. And then the the other thing that is that was probably the, the worth highlighting in 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 the ENO call is you know the talk about partners. So partners across all areas that we deal in, from deep in, blockchain, telco, and marketing. And one of them was there telling us how they're excited they are to work with World Mobile. Um, so all of, all of those things are signed, ready to go, but you know, we're going to be careful about how we communicate and expectations from from uh, uh, wider stakeholders. But if you join the community call, which should happen this month, um, you know, we've only got half of the month left, so it's not long to wait. And hopefully you can um, entertain yourselves with the halving and everything else going on in the crypto space. Um, there'll be a lot more to re reveal then. And I also, just to, just, just to remind you, I know this is a short, you know, crypto is a short news cycle. Unity node is being worked on. Scan for points is being worked on. Nodes are going up every single week. Users are going up every single week. Mav 100 is building. Reno is building. Uh, everywhere, <laughs> everywhere is building. Check the deployment diary. There are talk we're talking to, to authorities in Kenya, in Nigeria, in other countries as well. So there's so much going on here. <laughs> that sometimes it's it's hard to forget that, you know, we do have a little, sometimes we have a, 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 a um, um, let's say, an overstimulated <laughs> uh, community, but we also have a very, very, very energetic team that's turning those, what we're saying, into reality. And that is going to come in full force within the next few, few months. So... Yeah, I hope that's <laughs> that's enough for 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 everyone to go away and and you know message me if you want to hear more. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm seeing some some clips from 
our interview right now already floating on next with some of the things that we've discussed. So as you mentioned, a lot of people um, very aware tuning in here when it comes to any updates that they can get for World Mobile. Um, just the amount of enthusiasm around this project over the course of the past two weeks has been dramatic. As you mentioned, and you just reminded us very clearly, a lot being done on the ground in the US, abroad, in Africa, right, um, in Pakistan. And then in addition to that, with respect to the mobile application, so um, really a lot of wheels turning together and want to thank you for, you know, taking the time um, to join us here as an official member from World Mobile. Um, Paul, I see you're still in the chat. I'd love to get you on here for an additional follow up here. I appreciate you tuning in and providing so much value to the ecosystem as well. And then, of course, Rob and our good friend Clover, who is out this week, but he will be hopefully joining us here um, back on our regular schedule, um, hopefully soon. That will do it here. Um, this did go on a little bit longer than normal, but hopefully the viewers found this to be extremely, extremely insightful. I definitely learned a lot along the way. Some of my biggest takeaways were the partners, right? And some of these new avenues um, that we're almost, World Mobile is going to be diving into. So I'm excited to, again, be a part of this mission to be a, a, an early adopter of something that I personally believe will be able to impact millions, if not billions of lives. Uh, but that will do it here for today's video. Um, a lot of enthusiasm. Um, thank you to, for everybody for tuning in here. Thank you again, Paul. Thank you, Nissi. Thank you, OG. Thank you, Batman. Um, it really does mean a lot. Thank you again as well, Lord. So if you guys did enjoy today's chat, I would appreciate you and just ask that you guys just smash that thumbs up. It helps the algorithm here spread this out to people within and outside of Cardano. So if you believe in World Mobile, that's one of the easiest ways to go ahead and show your support. If you want more content like this, breaking down everything with World Mobile as well as Cardano, check out the channel. It's Dap Central. And last but not least, if you have any questions or comments, right, please leave them down below. That will do it here for today's live stream. Again, thank you all for tuning in. It really means the world. And on that note, we'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again. Bye-bye.